My pre-release copy of Aerosoft's Twin Otter, the DHC-6, has just had an update and its release is imminent for Microsoft Flight Simulator. In fact, by the time you watch this video, it may already be out. So I thought it was time to give it another test and see what's changed. And we're better to test it than head to Scotland's Orkney Islands and do the world's shortest commercial flight from Westray Airport to Papa Westray. This is a real-world route of 2.9 kilometers or just under 1.8 miles. There's no bridge, so you can't walk or drive there, but you can take a 20-minute boat ride, but often the seas are fairly rough. The route between the two islands is operated by Logan Air in the real world, and they use a Britain Norman 2 Islander. The Twin Otter is often used from Glasgow through to Barra. So I'm going to use some artistic license and take the Twin Otter on this epic journey, and we're going to do it in VR. If you'd like to know more about the upcoming release of the Twin Otter, then check out my preview video, link in the notes below. Welcome back to the Sim Hangar, my name's Mark, thanks for watching and let's get started. Welcome to Westray Airport, we're just waiting for the pilot to complete the paperwork, which takes about three times longer than the actual flight itself. It's half past nine in the morning and I'm using real weather. Lovely texturing on this aircraft and a considerable amount of attention has been paid to detail. Well, the last of the passengers have boarded so we can now shut the doors and it's time to get going. I'm not going to run through a startup process as I did that in my previous video. So I'm going to jump into my HP Reverb and let's go flying. In my earlier review, two things needed looking at. One was the animations, secondly, it was the sound. Things have certainly improved. Sound still needs a little bit of work, but it's a whole lot better. Let's have a listen. Parking brake is off and now we're just taxiing to the runway. It's a relatively short runway, we'll do a short backtrack. Just check that my flaps are 10 degrees, which they are. My lights are on. The further north you go, of course, the less daylight you get at this time of year. It's fairly breezy and we've got almost a 90 degree crosswind. Quick check to make sure that the runway is clear. We're now free to enter and backtrack. Now the flight time for this route varies considerably depending on the winds and the weather of course. But from what I can ascertain the record stands at 58 seconds. With an average time from takeoff to landing of around 80 to 90 seconds. So that's what we're going to try. I'm going to see if I can get down between 80 and 90 seconds. And if you decide to give this a go, let's see if you can beat me. If you do, let me know in the comments below. Just going to activate the stopwatch here so we can see exactly how long it takes me. That's it, it's reset to zero. Quick check just to make sure that everything's as it should be. Throttles to 50%. Let the engine spool up. Let's now start the stopwatch. There we go, it started. Throttle to full, come off the brakes, and our destination is just across the water there. Air speed is alive, 50 knots, 60 knots, and rotate. We're up, Papa Westray, here we come. Just hit the 35 second mark, the runway is just by those buildings to the far left. Coming back on the prop a little bit, coming off the throttle now, I'm not going to be retracting flaps, I'm, in fact I'm going to have to add in 20 degree flaps. Speed 90 knots and 30 degree flaps, that's our runway right there. 
We've just hit the one minute mark. 60 seconds gone, 30 seconds to go. This is going to be a bit tight. And to make matters worse, I'm a little high. Those runways do look short and narrow from up here. You're going to have to ignore the automatic callouts. We're at 85 seconds. Can I get down in 5 seconds? Speed 80 knots. Touchdown at 90 seconds. Oh, a bit of a bounce. Down again at 1 minute 33 seconds, 93 seconds. Not sure if the bounce counts. Reverse thrusters in. Well, that bounce let me down. I think I'm going to have to say I was down in 93 seconds. So, below average. We'll just do a quick turn around here. She turns around on nothing, this aircraft. You only need a meter or two. And then we'll taxi back to the terminal. Needless to say that this particular flight, uh, there's no meals provided. Flaps away now. Well, that was certainly fun and I'll certainly try it again. I did cheat a little bit on landing because I landed with the wind rather than using the correct runway. I reckon I can probably get that down to about 80 seconds, but 58 seconds a record? Mm, I'm not sure I can do it. Can you? Let me know in the comments below. This Twin Otto, which should be released tomorrow for the PC, the 19th of January, and some considerable time later for the Xbox based on the time it's taking Microsoft to release third-party products through the marketplace. Needless to say that the Twin Otter combined with the Kodiak from Simworks Studios are two of my favorite aircraft at this time. Before I go, I just want to have a look at an external view of my landing to make sure it was a bounce. Can't get away with that one, that's a definite bounce. But hey, it was worth a try if nothing else. Well, I hope you enjoyed my quick second look at the Twin Otter from Aerosoft due for imminent release. Just a quick reminder that this is a beta version that we're looking at still. This is not necessarily the release version. Thank you very much for joining me today. Are you going to take up the Westray Papa Westray challenge? It was great flying in VR. Take care, look after yourselves. I'll see you all again very soon. And bye for now.